Howdy folks, it's Meandering Mike in the Man Cave of Madness. It is after midnight, and we are doing an unboxing of Axis and Allies World War I, 1914. Now this has been out of print for a while. The prices have been crazy. The Avalon Hill version, Hasbro, etc. But that was the Avalon Hill imprint. Mm, prices were like up to $300, $400 on Noble Knight Games or eBay or, or whatnot. And, you know, there's a fair number of copies out there available for sale. <laughs> Very few people would buy at that price, but it was crazy. So you couldn't find the game at a decent price. Well, down there in that corner, <laughs> Renegade Studios got the license to start doing Axis and Allies reprints again. So uh, we can see uh, here that this is going to affect the price dramatically because you can get this for $100 off the Renegade website. There are vendors out on eBay right now that are selling copies of this for like $112 with free shipping. So I did a pre-order of mine. I just got mine today. So let's go ahead and open this guy up and see what's inside. Because I uh, <laughs> never bought one because by the time I got interested in getting back into Access and Allies, the prices had gone crazy. And I refused to pay $300 for a game like this. So, all righty. So the shrink is off the back. Let's flip her over. And... Where do we want to look here? Let's start down in that corner and see what the content says. All right, two game boards. So it comes in two pieces, 406 plastic pieces, 120 national control markers, 190 plastic chips. You put the chips underneath the units to represent stacks, bigger stacks. Eight national storage boxes, so the little trays are boxes for each. Eight of them. Hmm. All right. So eight different player positions. One general storage box, a battle board, one rule book, and does that say 36 dice? That says 36 dice. <laughs> they don't want you to have to skimp. They don't want you to have to... You know, everyone passed them around. They want everyone to have, you know, if you had six players, you could have six dice each, or you could, you know, have five dice and have a pool of extra six if you need to. I need to roll 12 dice for this battle, or some battles can get kind of big. All right, so, so it's an interesting perspective here on this map. So diagonally appears to be the north-south. I'm going to have to zoom out even more. Yeah, to get this. Now that's too much. So north to south, here's Scandinavia up here. So the Russian Empire here. Ottoman Empire Middle East. So obviously we have Austro-Hungary here, and Germany, France, Italy, Britain. There are various uh, African colonies. Um, so this does not include the Pacific. There was actual fighting in the Pacific. The Japanese entered the war on the side of the Allies, and uh, grabbed the German possessions that they had. They had some islands out there in the Pacific, and they had one, uh, like, land uh, port somewhere, some little enclave. And uh, it makes sense in a, in a game like this to, to exclude that because you need so much more real estate for the board, and it was kind of a, a, a minor sideshow, so that makes sense. So let's actually get inside and take a look. Oh, look real quick here. Four to six hours for two to eight players, ages 12 and up. Yeah, 
<laughs> Some games can go longer than that. It's in general, my experience with Axis and Allies. Um, <laughs> all right, let's get my fingers under the edges. Oh, it's coming up nice. Yeah, that was nice and easy. I'm not going to put that back there, even though you get to see it. That's going to take up too much space. So I am not going to do that. All right. Okay, it's nice, colorful paper. It's not glossy. It's matte finish. Uh, I mean, it feels nice and smooth, but it's it's not a high gloss paper. All right. Um, I'm not. I don't really like <laughs> the kind of khaki tan. It's a little too much. I'd like it a little lighter color to for a little better. I mean, it, it, this isn't too bad, but like here, this makes it a little harder to read the smaller font. Um, here, like this box here is, is colored, but this particular font at that size, it almost looks like the font's bold. Um, it's not too hard to read. All right, so do, 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 total pages of this rule book come in at 24, including the back cover, which is just credits in the front cover. So 22 pages of actual rules. Designer notes at the very beginning. That is very interesting. Normally they're at the end. A table of contents, components, how the wars won again. Always good to put victory conditions early. The combatants set up spaces on the game board. Political situation, order of play, five phases, and then winning the game. So coming back to, okay, now that you understand all the nitty gritty stuff, let's go back over the, the end game, the, the victory conditions that you know, we sort of generalized up front. Ah, there's game components. That's a nice picture and list. Um, mm -mm. The board is won. A capitals of the eight major powers. To win the game, an alliance must capture two enemy capitals and hold them. One of the captured allied capitals must either be London or Paris. When you're fighting against the allies, one of the central powers, it must be Berlin. So, when defeating the central powers, you must... You couldn't, couldn't take out, like, the Ottomans and the Austro-Hungarians and hit their two capitals. No, that's not enough. You must take out Berlin. And then London or Paris. Now, I would really hope, in a World War I game, that London would be really hard to take out. <laughs> um, Paris makes more sense, but... All right, so in the... Two, three, four, five, six, seven player game, which tells you which. Player. So, like, they're leaving out one person here who who is missing. Oh, no. Er. So, in a seven player game, I don't know if you can see that. Is that too small? I'm going to zoom. I'm going to go to one times mag. All right. The Russians and the United States. Which uh, United States comes into the war very late, and Russia. <laughs> Can be leaving the war very early, or um, not very early, but uh, so that makes sense. A six player game, France and Italy are together. Five players, Austria Hungary and Ottoman, which uh, you know, makes it picking on. Uh, there's, well, uh, I don't know how they handle the minor powers, like uh, say Bulgaria, for example. On, came in on the side of the war. Central powers, Romania comes on the side of the allied powers. All right, let's get on with it. Starting income, what their colors are, their symbols, the chips. Uh, production chart, which is just a number. <laughs> a tracker for a number. I'm not sure why you call that a chart. Um... IPCs, yeah, 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 industrial production credits. <laughs> Mobilization zone. That's basically 
your force pool. Uh, how much do those different things cost? Two, three artillery, four tanks, fighter purse. I'm assuming you gotta wait for tanks to start, because this does start in 1914. I didn't have any tanks at the start of the war, so. Uh, 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 sea zones, islands. Hmm. A sea zone can contain more than one island, but each is considered to be one territory with its own name and national emblem. Islands that have no name, label, or not game spaces. Special rules for Suez Canal and Constantinople. Choke points. Political situation. Mobilizing a minor power. Here we go. Serbia has no standing army to defend itself. Well, that's weird. Because they held off. <laughs> Central powers for a goodly long time for their size. Minor power either mobilizes to join the entering force or mobilizes to resist the invasion, depending on the reaction. Okay. So Serbia would mobilize with three infantry and one artillery. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, uh, uh. United States isolationism, optional Russian revolution. All right. Purchase and repair. Oh, that's right. Can battleships like can get damaged. There are no carriers. So if you're used to normal access and allies and want to build all those carriers, no. No, 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 no. So, yeah, well, submarines. Or oh, they should be called U-boats for the Germans. Amphibious assault, combat. So I'm assuming most of you are familiar with access and allies. It's uh, interesting that this far to finally you got an attack value, you got a defend value, you roll uh, the die to see if you get that number or less, and you shoot back and forth at each other, one guy can retreat. Uh, uh, uh. Typical kind of buckets of dice kind of game. Foods on a map, buckets of dice. Um, hmm. Multinational forces. Now that's interesting. I would have thought, I would have expected to see like an example of the combat spelled out here. An example, they fire, they fire, they remove casualties. Man, yeah, how about an example? Maybe there's a book, examples of play and whatnot. But uh, I don't see that. That is bizarre to me. That uh, I mean, again, it's 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 relatively simple. But for the kind of audience that th this is geared towards, for you know, more newcomers to to, to war games too. I mean, again, you know, <laughs> many of us would laugh if calling Axis Sun is a war game. It is a war game. Um, that's, this is a, an advertisement for their Transformers and G.I. Joe game. Uh, 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 so this is uh, this is the battle board. It's showing you know what their attacking strength is and or defending. So turning attacking and defending. So like. Uh, Inventory defend on a threat. See that they're upside down. Inventory defend on a three, but they attack with a two. And uh, tanks here defend with a one, attack with a two or a three, 
if you have artillery support. Um, which is interesting. I mean, obviously, <laughs> tanks were a, a new thing. Uh, and in, in the normal, you know, World War II based Axis and Allies, you know, tanks have a three attack rating right off the bat. Wow, infantry to have a three defense. So I'm pretty sure in the original Axis and Eyes, infantry only had a two. <laughs> and they had a one attack rating. So I don't know. Has things changed so much since I've been gone? Um, but yeah, yeah. Where's. I would have expected to see a, 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 a little illustrated example of play in there. All right, those are the control markers. Now here's the maps, the map sections. Before I look at those, let's tilt this up and those are all the boxes with all the minis in them. So the general storage box, the eight ones, tells uh, on on the box some information about each side, their setup, and what's their uh, industrial production credits. Now it's dates. <laughs> Pretty simple. They don't come on so much later. The British spread out all over the place. Yeah, Italy's kind of small. Not very powerful. Ottomans, 16, 14. So, yeah. So, if the Russians have 25... They're not going to be spending much against Turkey. Uh, 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 26, 30, 35 for the Germans. Wow. All right. So I want to take a quick peek at what's in the general storage box. Wow, they're there, man. 36 dice. So personally... They should have at least two or three different colors of dice. Because it's much easier, in my mind, to be able to roll. And you can roll, like, well, these are the guys with the two strength, and these are the guys with the three strength. You can roll them all at once. Um, and, and know that, okay, I knew that these needed two to hit, these needed three to hit. Them. All those tippies. So, I will supplement this with... with dice of different colors so you can make it a little easier to speed up the rolling 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 all right so again this is this weird diagonal board i'm gonna i don't know how i'm gonna easily show <laughs> i can't i can't show the the board sitting up on its end diagonally i'm gonna try to Wow, get this to stand on its own. I'm gonna zoom out and back. <laughs> ah, let's see here. Yep, 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 this is gonna be... So again, remember, the two boards together, diagonal up this way is north. And they've <laughs> really stretched the projection very wide across the middle of Africa. But, you know, Africa is quite, quite big in our, in our typical Mercator projection that you see on maps. Overstates the Northern Hemisphere, understates Africa. But this projection still, that's <laughs> the width of that is, 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 is way off. Um, but relatively so. It's, you know, since, you know, that is Africa there underneath Spain, Gibraltar, and, you know, you, whoa, <laughs> sorry about that, and way over here, you know, where you've got the Middle East, that's Egypt is bumping into it, but uh, this, the, uh, the northern coast, yeah, they, they crammed it into the corner of that way, so that's why this looks so much longer where ideally this would come out a little more here. You'd stretch this whole corner out more. It would be much longer. Uh, but they needed to have the C zones go around. And as long as the relative positions, 
you know, maneuvering territory to territory, what's connected to what, that makes sense. But it is a little odd, but I'm sure you get used to it quick enough. So France, Ireland, Wales, York, sure, up there, London, okay, Belgium. Uh, hmm, do they even have Netherlands on here? We have to get to the next section of the map. Oh, did we finish looking at others? Rome, which Rome is not a port, so that port <laughs> is not Rome itself. It's in that province that has Rome, but Rome is not a port. Um, all right, let's close that down. Actually, I shouldn't. Well, yeah, I want to open up at least one of the boxes, the pieces, to take a look at that. All right, let's get the next map section up there. All right. So, does that make it better for you? I told it like that. Does that? <laughs> so, Scandinavia, which didn't really get involved. Uh, Finland was part of, was occupied by the Russian Empire, as was Poland. So that's all part of the Russian Empire at the start. Um, so Prussia, Silesia, Berlin, Kiel. Now, when was the Kiel Canal built? <laughs> was it not in place in World One? That I do not know. I do not remember when the Kiel Canal was built. So there is Holland there, nice and neutral, as is Denmark. Okay, so Bohemia is part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. So Tyrolia is basically what we would call Austria. Uh, yeah, with Vienna, which... <laughs> so Trieste, this is... Trieste is actually a little closer to the actual Italian border. Uh, so they have this stretched out weird. Because if that's Albania, you know, this whole Dalmatian coast, uh, you know, Trieste is is, <laughs> is up here, uh, Serbia. So they don't have Montenegro on there separately. So there's Bulgaria, there's Romania. Bulgaria did enter on the side. Oh, interesting. There... They're showing it as part of the Ottoman Empire? Mm, mm, no. <laughs> and it's got a separate symbol, so that's interesting. Uh, I wonder why they do that. Do, 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 do. Uh, 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 and yeah, Romania here's uh, this book, which they do, but it, it wasn't like 1916 that Romania came in. I don't know. I don't know, folks. So yeah, over here, we got where uh, 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 the Ottomans could be fighting the Russians. Now, oh my God, no, folks. See, this is bad. <laughs> Okay, so here's Crimea. <laughs> Sevastopol is over here. On this side of Crimea. This is supposed to be the Sea of Azov, and this is supposed to be uh, like, no, 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 no. Sevastopol's over here. Uh, all right. All right, there we go. Transjordan, <laughs> which... <laughs> You got, you got, no, you didn't call this part down here at all Trans Jordan. Jeez. I mean, the Jordan River is here. Trans Jordan's that side of the Jordan River. So they misname. If you're going to have a, a thing of this whole problem, you shouldn't call it that name. So, I don't know. A mm -mm -mm. bad historical. Uh, Emily is impossible. That sounds good. Yeah, no one, no one was going to go through during World War One. All right, folks, that's that map. I got got some pet peeves there. I'm in the minor disagreements with their 
But I didn't mind the stretching things, weird things. But don't put Sevastopol way over there. Don't call that province Transjordan. Uh, so let's look at the United States forces as, as an American. All right. Let's uh, handy dandy. Yeah, this is a case where scissors would be much better. All right. Of course, I picked a very dark color, so the contrast. All right, so now yeah, you probably can't see that. That's a problem. I'm going to tip this up, put that underneath. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah, so that will get some. So, I'm trying to gauge which is which. So, I'm assuming that's a battleship. That's a cruiser. Is that supposed to be a transport? All right, I'm trying to identify the submarine. All right. Cruiser. Ah, here we go. No hers. That's a tank. That's upside down. No, you can't see that there. Tank. Artillery. Now, of course, they're going to look here. These are not to scale, folks. <laughs> Against each other. They're not to scale. <coughs> There's your air. Now, so, they don't have separate... Uh, uh, or do they have separate fighters and bombers? Hmm. <laughs> Where was that? I'm calling them fighters, which could drop bombs. They drop bombs, uh, but not the specialized role to the degree in. World War Two, you know, there was fighter bombers in, in, in World War Two, pure fighters, pure bombers. Uh, and I believe there was that extent in World War One, some of that too, some of that uh, specialization for the most part early on. The plane's bombing capability was literally just throwing the equivalent of you know, bigger than a hand grenade thing, but just out the, out the plane. All right, so I am not pour these out here, folks. Are saying, what are you doing, meandering, Mike? Here, meandering. Aha! That. <laughs> what is it really? That's a sub. <laughs> that can't be. That is, that's not, not, not what I was expecting. That is pretty wimpolini. I don't even have a picture in the book of that. Uh, there on that little card, yeah, yeah. That's a wimpy looking submarine, folks.
not sure what to say about that. <laughs> I don't mind the tanks. I don't mind the infantry guys, the planes, the artillery pieces. Um, even though, I mean, I, I wonder, yeah. There's, there's many varieties of designs of tanks. Um, I don't know if different nations have some different look to their tanks or not. I'm not going to dig into that until we're already at 30 minutes. So uh, I wanted to keep this to under 30 minutes. But, you know, as meandering might go, as meandering might meanders. So, um, yeah, let's just... Let's, Let's leave it at that. <laughs> Submarine's definitely the most disappointing of all there. Um, and yeah, so there is not another booklet. So there are <laughs> no actual Example of play. There is no like here's a turn, he attacks here, he does this, he retreats. There's pictures of amphibious reinforcements, sea combat, battleship, press or break off the attack combat sequence. Yeah, I am I am just stunned that this does not have an illustrated example of combat. Uh just 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 stunned. Just stunned. You're looking at there saying, what's going on? I mean I'm I'm looking here through the whole thing, the order of play, the movement phases, you know, talk about the land units, the fighters, the sea units, okay, given all those details, the general movement rules, conducting combat, you know, it's da 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 da. I gotta zoom out. You can see a little better that's not working for. You know, but there's not actually a description. Mm mm mm. Of an actual battle. I am, I am stymied. I am really, really stymied. If you are publishing a game, it's intended to be relatively mass market. This is a little more niche in its access and allies in a World War One version. But still, why would you not include? <laughs> oh well, oh well. <laughs> Mine is, I should not question. I totally will question, and I do question. So, Mandarin Mike is not afraid to question decisions. Um, yeah, this is just silly. All right. <laughs> Mandarin Mike, man, Kevin, man, is call here. I am excited to get this. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Uh, I thought, like, oh, my God, I'm never going to pay that much. I'll never get a copy of the World War One version. Um, so I'm, I'm happy that they republished it. And all those people that were trying to hang on to their copies, you know, well, sorry, folks. You got greedy, and you could have sold them long time ago if you had dropped your price there's people who would have bought it you know even if it was you know still like 150 but you asked 300 and now people are gonna get it for 100 or 112 shipped <laughs> i don't know there could be other I mean, that's this one i just found in, in five seconds of looking on ebay like boom right there here's a here's a seller that had 10 or more copies 112 bucks free shipping you know, in the U.S., so, cool. Anyway, that's Axis and Allies. Let's see if I can put that 
there. World War I. 1914 is when it starts. Compendium of Tactics and Principal Operations. No, not in the sense of rule book. <laughs> but you didn't even include an example of combat. Uh, so, anyway. Anyway. All right, folks. <laughs> Take care. I hope you had a good uh, Father's Day. Uh, I know everyone's had a father. You might, <laughs> father might not be around now. You might not have been a father or can't be a father. Um, but uh, we've all had one. So hope you all had a good, happy Father's Day. And uh, <laughs> take care. I'll meander to the, on to the next thing. Hope to do a couple more videos tomorrow. I got a lot done in the man cave garage. Got more racks put together, a lot of stuff. I, I need to do a video of that, which is where I currently am. We'll be going down to get more comic books out of that last storage unit. Hopefully, hopefully, could close it down by the end of June. We will see. So, anyway... All you good folks, take care, relax through the rest of your June, and ciao.